All right. Day four, round two. Now supposedly this one's gonna go through until about, I don't know, one o'clock-ish, and then it's supposed to blow out. Um, you know, and this is the, the last of the four days worth of rain. And three weeks of August, no rain, which is typical. So, here we are. So me and Miss Panda went outside and went for a walk and chased a squirrel and started to rain and we're under the porch. <laughs> she don't care. Truly, she doesn't. She just follows me around. All right, well, y'all have an awesome day. Did you hear the thunder? <laughs> and Miss Panda and I We'll talk to you later. Say hi to your pee boys. Panda bears. Gotta look up. Panda. You <laughs> silly, huh? Oh, you silly. All right. Y'all have an awesome day. Again. <laughs> Afternoon. This is Nita and Miss Panda with the Timepiece Garden. And according to all the news sources, I will not be getting any more rain for the next three weeks. The last of it's clicked out today. You can see Panda's laying in a puddle. Because that's what dogs do. At least that's what mine does. <laughs> and um, I still got some cloudiness in the sky, but it's light. It's lightning. Not lightning as in lightning flashes, but it's, it's not as dark. Um, so I agree. I think I'm done with the rain. Um, so what's that mean? Well, I'm going to stand outside because I can't build A-frames in the house and I'm going to build the other two A-frames. Um, I went ahead and moved my cart out of the way so I can stand on the rocky area that is dry over here and not out in front here where it gets kind of muddy um, and build the other two frames. And then I'll take my tools down with me into the garden and I will shorten the one frame that's too long so I can get the three frames done and set up in place so when I go shopping and get some more fabric liner or shelf liner, because it's not really fabric. Um, it'll just be ready for me to tie it on or staple it down. So, having said that, let me get busy, and Miss Pan and I'll talk to you in a few. So I actually had all three of them done, and uh, went down and took care of the tree, and I'm gonna show that video after this. Um, and then came back and went to put these in the garden, and realized that I did not account for roughly the, I don't know, what is that, an inch, two and a half, because these are one by fours, but they're not a full one inch. So it's close to two inches on each side that I'm off. The bars are all too long, not accounting for the, you know, the actual A-frame portion of it. So I have to take them all apart and take two inches off. Oh, <sighs> yes. So I've done one. It's, uh, it's down the hill. I'll, wa I'll walk down and show you. In the middle of doing this one, have not started that one yet at all, and my batteries are dead because I've already cut them once so the, the, the poles would fit the first time. So, I'm going to go charge batteries and call it quits for today. You know, because both the batteries are dead. Just oh, aggravating. Crazy. I just, I just can't seem to get anywhere. All right, I'm not walking all the way down there. Um, you can see it sitting right there. Isn't that pretty? Um, it fits inside the bed perfectly. It, it is what it's supposed to do. Um, so anyway, I'm done. I'm going to go take a shower. I've got sawdust on me from where I was chopping the, the tree branches. And, and, you know, I'm not going to get this portion done. So the wood, etc. I'm going to leave outside. Again, I cannot put these together inside the workshop. I have a problem getting them out the door. Well, at least the first time around. The first one I did. Um, so... I'm going to move all of this under the under my cover. You can see where it stays dry. I'm going to put the tools away, put the batteries into charge, go in the house, take a shower. Because that's just what it's time to do. I will probably let Panda play in the hose for a minute because she's been back here laying in puddles um, to help her stay cool. She likes that, but I'll probably let her play in the hose for a minute before we actually physically go in the house just to make sure we can get the mud off of her. Um, so you all have an awesome day. 
and Miss Panda and I will talk to you later. I don't know, maybe a winter squash? You know, could be. I don't think it's a zucchini or a summer squash. I think it may be a winter squash. Um, and then if you don't know how to tell male flowers from female flowers, female flowers all have a bump at the bottom. So like that one over there, there's no bump at the bottom. That is a boy flower. Um, the one behind it right there, that is also a boy flower. Um, the one up over there, she got a big, oop, she got a big bump on her. That's a girl. Um, think girls have babies. Girls produce the fruit that produce the seeds that are basically babies. Um, boy flowers. Where is it? There it is. Like that one. Makes sense. They're needed to pollinate. Where are we? At? So, it's usually the easiest way to tell. That one's going to give me fruit. I don't know. We'll see. Um, again, it's. I thought it was a, a gourd because that's what was here last year. And um, figured maybe I had missed one when I came out here and tried to pick up them all up. Um, but gourds do not have yellow flowers, and these are all yellow flowers. So it's, it's a squash of some sorts. And it was probably the bird that up there in that nest got something out of the compost pile and plopped out a seed. That's what I'm thinking. All right. Supervisor's telling me it's it's wet, it's icky. Let's go in the house. So we're going to go in the house. And I'll leave you with the, uh, the butterflies on the butterfly bush. Excuse me, this is butterfly weed. So they do their thing. Come get a drink. So I still don't have any monarchs yet. Maybe soon. Having said that, my butterfly bush, which are the purple spires, you can see that one right there. Um, they're drought resistant, but I have been watering them. Um, just because I'm a firm believer with all the drought that we've had. Um, their, the butterfly flowers are probably not doing well. Does that make sense? So any little piece of flower that I can give them is, um, is good for them, you know? All right. Talk to you later. All righty. We're here at the tree. The, uh, stuff hanging down so I can get it, uh, Stop scratching the Jeep. Figure it's a, uh, this leaf here is, yeah, this leaf here, there you go, is um, shoulder level, I'm 5'9". If it's sitting on my shoulder, it's dragging well, so. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna start taking stuff off. You know? It's one of those, I knew I was gonna do this. Sooner or later, it will come all the way down. This pine tree here, that I can now touch. I couldn't touch this before. Um, sooner or later, we'll stop supporting the oak. Um, and I'll just, you know, keep cutting branches. Especially the smaller stuff here that I can reach with the pole saw. Until I can get it, you know, until it falls all the rest of the way down. Sooner or later it will. You know, once it's on the ground, fully on the ground, you know, because you can see where there's three of the four pines and you can see how they're bent. They're not broken yet. All right, anyway, let me get busy. And uh, I'll show you an after picture where... It'll be clear. Huh. All right, clear and drivable again. The, uh, whew. I know you you can't tell it from here. Does that make sense? All you can tell is that I cleared it. Yeah, so I'm gonna kind of walk around. Um, about here, here we go, right here. You can see where the oak branch here, let it focus catches right there on that pine tree. That makes sense. And that, that hook right there 
is what is preventing the whole top of the half of this oak tree from touching the ground. And you can't tell because it's really messy there. It's got some cedar mixed in with it and everything else, so it's, it's hard to see. But it's all right there, you know, where everything comes together. Having said that, that's where the pine tree bends right there. And you can just kind of barely see it through the dying oak leaves. But that hook is what keeps that branch. And there is, there's a large branch right there. You can see part of it right there from touching the ground. It's not on the ground yet. Um, and so the bottom of the tree over here is on the ground. Well, not the bottom, but the part that broke off from up there. Makes sense. That's on the ground right there, but that's the only part that's on the ground. Um, whenever that pine decides to break, so that makes sense, everything will hit the ground, and I'll be able to clear it. Um, but until then, the possibility of it rolling one way or the other is just insane. You can even see where the cedar's going up. Right there, it's curved, right there. So again, all the tangle right there is what's stopping everything. And sooner or later, we'll have the right storm, and it'll just, it'll bring the whole thing down, and I'll be able to clear it. You know? So now, right now we're good enough. I can walk around with my hand up in the air. Not touch anything. Can't even touch those leaves. Does that make sense? It's nice having a pole saw that, uh, you know, extended out way taller than me. And uh, keep it clear. So, having said that, I'm drivable again. I'll be able to go to the gym in the morning. You know, no weight, no fess, no muss. Ken has been down there playing. She's way down there. So she knows the area we, when we walk down here. This is actually a really good blackberry picking area until we got too dry. They dried out and shriveled worse than raisins. All right. Anyway, it's time for me to go. Y'all have an awesome day. Miss Panda Eye in the Tree. We'll talk to you later.